Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today we're taking a look at the recently reintroduced 2023 Acura Integra A-Spec with the Tech Package. This vehicle is sitting on 235-40 Continental tires wrapped around 18-inch alloy wheels with a gloss gray finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Platinum White, and it's kind of like a pearl coat white. Uh, it does not, it's not like a regular old work truck type white. It's, it's a really nice metal flake, and uh, I guess you probably have to see it in person. On camera, you might be able to pick up some of the awesomeness. But taking a look here in the front, has a nice big Acura badge that also serves as the radar adaptive cruise control, control sensor. So it's like right behind that badge right there. There's also parking sensors. There are actually some down here in the white portion, but also way up in here in the grill, there's one as well uh, in the gloss black grill. The headlights are a multi-projector, fantastic headlight system. You gotta check out my night video. Uh, and the fog lights are also a projector LED as well. So looking at the profile, uh, you can see that it has body colored handles, upper portion of the side mirror is body colored. Uh, we have some pretty decent lines going on here. You can see with the shadow going on, kind of swooping up all the way to the back glass. Uh, and the pillar here is gloss black. Uh, so that way if you, when you tint the glass, when you, not if you, tint the glass is gonna solidify that area there, especially with the white and tinted windows looks fantastic. This is what the key looks like, and it's a full proximity key system. Uh, and it's designed to where you can just keep it in your pocket, use the vehicle 100%. It's fairly small and has a little bit of weight to it, but not too bad. Uh, could be a little bit lighter. It's a little chunky on this side. Has the Acura there, name on it. Lock, unlock, the ability to release the trunk and a panic button. Let's go ahead and press that panic button. So it's a pretty decent horn. So as long as you have this key with you uh, to lock the doors, you simply put your hand or finger or whatever right here on this sensor indicated, indicated by these three little lines right here. The vehicle's already locked, uh, so it's still just start trying to relock it. To unlock the door, you just take your hand, put it behind the handle. As long as the key's in, on the outside of the doors, it, it can't be inside and it'll unlock the doors. So some people think that just anybody can just walk up and unlock the door. So it's not true. You have to have the key on the outside of the door and the sensor there will allow you to unlock it. So it allows you access to the vehicle. There's also a physical key location here, right under there. And there's a physical key on the inside of the key fob and you can unlock the door when you, when you need to. It's only on the driver's side though. Here's the inside of the passenger side door. Now it has this red, like a maroon color red interior, which is looking nice. Uh, but it has mostly black, and there's some metallic as well, uh, accents. So this is a soft touch material here. This is hard touch. This is soft. This is hard touch. Uh, so it's kind of like a blend here. This is soft as well, of course. Now these pockets, or it's actually a handle, but you can utilize that as a pocket, but it has this hard surface. So uh, whatever you put in there is going to slide around, make some noise, that kind of thing. Then there's pockets here in the bottom and the hard touch surfaces here as well. And it has the ELS sound system. Uh, sounds pretty decent. It's pretty impressive. There's two speakers there in the door. So there's a threshold area. You can see it has the A-spec uh, seal plate there in the threshold. It does have a power seat here on the passenger side, uh, but you can't go up and down and tilt or anything. It's just forward and back and then tilt the back. So these are, they're like a Alcantara type suede there in the center. And then you have the synthetic leather type material here on the outside. Pretty neat looking stitching and combination of colors. So the floorboard in front of the passenger seat has a pretty good amount of space here. And the floor mats, they don't hook in, uh, but they do have like this Velcro effect to the carpet, so they don't really slide around too much. A Little bit of tapering going on right there, but overall, just wide open space. This is a hard touch surface, and there's a non-locking glove compartment. Smooth plastic on the inside, pretty standard size. And this is a soft touch uh, material here, as well as the dash. It's a non-reflective 
dash there as well. And then this kind of looks like a, it's going for like a, similar to like, I guess, a carbon fiber type look there. Looks pretty cool though. The door opening is really good. Uh, so getting in and out of the vehicle here in the front, not really a problem. Uh, plenty of headroom and everything. Wide up the space. Swing of the door is nice too. Uh, the back door, swing of the door could be a little bit better, but overall pretty decent as far as getting in and out. Uh, right in there kind of swoops down, but still pretty good as far as getting in and out of the back seat as well. The inside of the back door, quite a bit different uh, as far as the styling and the material. So you can see the front door there and the back door, and we basically have almost all hard touch surfaces except for right in here and here. The back seat is basically a bench seat and it has the, it, instead of, there's no like suede or anything like that, it's just a regular seat with the synthetic leather material. And it does have the latch system. Uh, but the latch system has like these covers like this to get to it to secure the car seat. Uh, which is pretty good because this gets out of the way and you don't lose it. It's attached to the seat and you just kind of tuck it when you're done. Um, so it works, it works fine. I think it looks okay. Armrest, cup holders here as well. Very soft armrest, by the way. So yeah, basically a flat bench seat, nothing really contoured too much or anything like that. And the back of the passenger seat, it does have the map pocket, but not the, the, uh, the driver's seat. And then there is a pretty significant hump in the middle and two USB charge ports back here on the back of the console. But you notice there's no vents or anything. Look at the back of the vehicle. It has a body colored shark fin antenna right here. Third brake light is at the top of the glass. Looking really nice. Nice sharp red LED brake light, third brake light. There's also a gloss black deck lid spoiler here. Looking pretty cool. Now it has the Integra name kind of pressed in here instead of like a, a sticker or a badge or something, which is pretty neat. There is an A-Spec badge on this side. Now there's parking sensors across the back. You can see them right here. Here, they're blended in with the white portion instead of the black portion, which is down here. And that's a gloss black uh, down there at the back of the vehicle. <clears throat> it does have the dual exhaust. Now it's just split at the muffler, but um, it does have the dual exhaust tips. There's also backup camera, which is Pretty, pretty good because it's in the center, but it's kind of in this low down spot. I wish it was a little bit higher, maybe up in here, integrated with the vehicle. Uh, but as it is, at least they centered it this time. Open the hatch. So this is a hatchback. <laughs> and um, you can press the button there, or you can use the key, lift it up. And it has this removable shade as well. So if you need a little bit of extra cargo space, you can use that. Have the seats occupy with passengers, then this will be your cargo space, which is pretty darn good. Uh, as far as it's kind of recessed in there and since it's a hatchback it has a lot of opening space you can fit some stuff in there a lot easier than just a regular trunk and it does have some lights on both sides there's a subwoofer here as well there's tie downs there's also this little cubby area where uh, you can put some stuff like you know larger box or whatever but if you just want to use it as a separate uh, area you can lift this up snap it in place and then it's a separate little place where you can keep things in that in that side pocket I guess you can say this also lifts up and there is this foam insert uh, which has a, a uh, tire inflator kit like an air pump and a little bit of additional space there but you can take this out and put a spare tire in here apparently but uh, it doesn't come with one uh, you just have to make sure that it, it's for this vehicle and all that stuff. Probably be best if you're going to carry buy a spare tire, might as well just go ahead and buy one that matches these, I guess. Depends on the cost, but uh, 
Sometimes the donuts are super expensive. It's ridiculous sometimes. You can fold these seats down one side or the other. It's a 60-40 split, so you can add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space when needed. Uh, or you can fold them both down, and considering it's a hatchback, you have a lot of room in here, and you can put like a huge box or bicycle box or whatever in here. Um, having that ability to fold those seats down uh, is, it helps out a lot. Fuel door is here on the driver's side, and it's a locking fuel door. It locks with the vehicle. And it's a capless design, so put the nozzle in there, pump the gas, and uh, you don't have to worry about taking the cap off and all that stuff. Now it is uh, recommended that you use 91 octane fuel. Starting it up, as long as you have the key inside the vehicle, press and hold the brake and the clutch, and press this button right here. You don't have to hold it, you just press it. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now the floorboard, uh, the floor mat, snaps in place. It hooks in place, unlike the other side. And it still has that Velcro effect as well. There's the accelerator, brake pedal, and clutch pedal, all with the raised rubber aluminum pedals, looking nice. And there's a footrest as well. Let's take a look under the hood. The hood latch is a little bit to the left of center, so it's right over here. Just reach in, move it to the right, and lift up. And it does require a prop to hold the hood up, but it's not very heavy. Um, there's actually two places where you can put the prop. Here's the prop here, and it swings up, uh, and there's the first location, which is a normal height, normal lifting of the hood, makes it easy. The second location for if you really want the hood out of your way is down here. I like to have the hood up like that, completely out of the way. So you'll notice it has this little uh, seal there to catch air, uh, fresh, cool air while you're driving, and it goes into the intake there. There's also insulation on the underside of the hood, as well as the firewall. Now this is a turbocharged engine. It is uh, oriented this way, so it's a front wheel drive vehicle. So the front of the engine is here, back of the engine is there, the transmission is located back here under this battery. The battery is nice and easy to get to as well. You can see it has insulation on it. Powering of this vehicle is a 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine that puts out 200 horsepower. Now it's a VTEC turbocharged four-cylinder engine. And in this case, it's paired with a six-speed manual transmission. It also has a limited slip differential. And it does have like rev matching and stuff like that in the options there, and uh, which is pretty cool. The blind spot detection indicator and rear cross traffic alert indicators are right here on the side mirror. They illuminate when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side except for it has a few more buttons. There's two presets for the power seat. Power windows, the front two are automatic up, to, up and down. Just regular glass, no lamination or anything. And back windows, you have to hold them, but they don't go all the way down. You can see right there where they stop. Here's door lock controls, side mirrors are adjusted here. Just pick a side, adjust it with that little pad. Now the driver's seat, a little bit different. It is powered, but it does have the ability to go up, down, tilt, and all that stuff, and then tilt here, and then a four-way lumbar adjustment. As far as comfort, uh, these are pretty decent seats. To the steering column, there's only one button here, and that is the traction control. So default will be on, but you can turn this off if you want to spin tires for whatever reason. Tilt and telescoping steering column that you lock in place here. Before I put the shade up, I just want to comment on the heads-up display. Uh, the heads-up display is actually pretty darn good as far as visibility with the naked eye and the brightness and the information that's on there. It's logically placed and it has, um, you know, the key information. And it's not distracting, you know. Some, some heads-up displays are a little bit distracting. Uh, this one, although it is a little bit, I do have it on the highest brightness, um, and, but, but it's just sharp and clear, so it's satisfying to look at. And like I said, it gives you useful information. So I, I do like the heads up display on this vehicle. Sitting in the driver's seat, and I have this, the driver's seat all the way back and all the way down. 
and all the way down feels like I'm sitting on the ground basically um, and all the way back is a little bit too far back for me to drive um, I'm six feet tall and this I can't really push the clutch in all the way and stuff like that so uh, this is too far back so as far as having long legs you should have a decent amount of room here for most people now this part right here kind of gets in the way right here sometimes depending on how I'm sitting this is a hard plastic and it seems like it just protrudes out a little bit more than what it has to um, if this was you know in a little in a little bit more I think it would have been better but uh, overall on the left side is no problem at all now the steering wheel is a uh, it's a leather wrap steering wheel with the red stitching there on the inside as the a spec uh, badge here as well and just overall good good comfort it's n it's not like super soft and cushy but it is it does have a little bit of give to it in certain in most areas and the thickness is good as well there's no flat bottom or anything but yeah it looks good it's very functional cruise controls here on the right side so once you turn it on uh, it stays on so when you get in the vehicle again it's going to still be on you're not going to have to constantly put it turn it back on, back on every time you get in the vehicle uh, but you can set resume and cancel here and then you can um, this 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 button corresponds with the screen we'll get to that in a minute this is the set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you and this is the turn on and or off to lane keep assist here on the left side once we again once again we have another scroll wheel which we'll get to volume for the radio change to the tracks and then you have the uh, voice recognition as well windshield wiper controls are over here and it does have the automatic rain sensing windshield wipers you do have to just set it to automatic there and then on this side um, it has the turn signal but you also have the headlight switch so you have uh, the automatic you do have the ability to toggle on or off the daytime running lights so if you want to have those turned off you can and then you have automatic uh, parking lights and then headlights fog lights are controlled here Scroll wheels here and here and they scroll up and down but they also press in and make selections uh, so we'll look at that we'll go through that in just a second there's the you can see there's the tachometer rpm speedometer there on the right you also have a digital speedometer what your cruise control is doing some of the stuff is on the heads-up display as well it shows you the last speed limit sign you passed uh, the status of the, of the idle stop the outside temperature odometer um, what drive mode you're in normal and then uh, so the information within these gauges here uh, is selectable you also have the engine cooler temperature fuel gauge there on the far right uh, so here on the left side, left side, left wheel. So we use the wheel, we can scroll up and down. So you can see you can get different selections here. And this is the um, different audio uh, selections. So we can have USB, Bluetooth, that kind of thing, AM, FM. And then when we go to customize display, we can choose uh, what we want to show in here. So let's say we just never go to AM we can deselect that so now we don't have to scroll past the AM let's say we never go to USB we can deselect that let's say we never use Alexa we can deselect that or the apps we can deselect that so now when we go back here back there back there now when we're scrolling through we have less to scroll through it just gives us the ones that we want uh, we can also actually let me go back we can also go to audio and clock and we can turn that off so now there's nothing there right uh, so if we don't want to have all that all that stuff there we don't have to have it same same thing here on the right side use the scroll wheel right here now we're going to scroll up and down and you can see it's part of uh, different information basically so we can adjust the brightness here, heads up display settings, uh, and then we can have this customized as well. And then you have your trip, your range, average speed, navigation compass. Uh, this is would be the driver attention level, status of seat belts. This is it comes in handy when you have kids in the back. Uh, maintenance, oil life, tire pressure, uh, safety support system. What's on? What's not? You can go in there and adjust that. Uh, you can also have no content here if you want. And it goes back to brightness. So if we go in here, we can do the same thing where we can select 
what we do not or what we do want to have. So the driver attention, we can deselect that if we want. Um, we can take away the tire pressure. Whatever we want to take away here, we can take away. Let's go back. But let's go ahead and choose the no content. Let's see what it looks like here. Now I changed to kilometers per hour actually. So press and hold it, go back to uh, miles per hour. All right, so there we go. So I if you press and hold it here on the right side, that's how you change to kilometers per hour. So you can see what it looks like there. So there we go. So now we have a cleaned up. There's a lot of information there, but we can also have this cleaned up display like this if we wanted to. All right, I already saw the uh, start button and here is the touch screen over here So there's always some kind of glare It's not you can't you can't really see it with the With my eyes, but for some reason the camera Makes it look like there's this huge glare Anyways, um, okay, so that this is just the clock right here. Let's go home and You can see there's three different pages here on home sort of like your cell phone different home pages there uh, Bluetooth audio all right let's start here from the beginning there's all apps and then you can select the ones that you want to have in there uh, satellite radio FM these are all shortcuts smartphone connection that would be your AM uh, your Apple CarPlay Android Auto uh, system updates Alexa phone these are all pretty much self-explanatory except for the um, Smart shortcuts. Your vehicle provides quick access to call, music, and navigation when applied, suggested, tailored for you. Learning over time. So it's basically going to learn what you use and uh, provide that for you. All right. So Bluetooth audio, USB, AM. AM. Uh, so you see the separation between AM and FM. Wi-Fi hotspot. Acura Link, which is a cell phone app. Trip computer, vehicle settings, and in general settings clock that's where we were before compass and then you can install apps using a USB uh, drive so a lot of these are just shortcuts you know the shortcuts to different things and there's a physical button here here physical volume knob change to the stations physical but down here are some more uh, on-screen shortcuts so your phone FM Bluetooth audio connect these are all additional shortcuts as well you have the clock that's always in that same spot which is good and showing you what's the deal with the audio source so let's go to satellite radio just see what it looks like here all right so now um, you have you can go to your channel list here it shows your album art uh, presets here your favorites so it's a fairly basic system a lot of shortcuts everywhere a little bit of redundancy uh, but overall functional and it, and it connects to the Bluetooth system fast very fast I just get in the vehicle and immediately it starts playing music on the for, for my cell phone so the so the Bluetooth system is pretty fast no connectivity issues and stuff like that like Toyota has been having all right so heated seat heat control here it's a high medium and low and then off so it's a three-stage heated seat for the driver and the passenger Driver and passenger temperatures are here on the climate control, fan speed, you have automatic um, where you want the air to blow, so you can choose where you want. When you put on automatic, it automatically adjusts that, but also the fan speed, which I don't have to turn down. Uh, front and rear defrosters, and when you turn on the rear defroster, it also turns on the heated side mirrors as well. All right, just below that is a USB, uh, port and then a USB-C port 12 volt power supply and a wireless charger for your cell phone and this is kind of like a rubberized uh, bottom so the device isn't sliding around pretty good amount of room there as well all right so there's the uh, the shifter and then there's the individual mode so this would be like you have drive modes and I'm going to cycle through here Comfort, normal, sport. 
and it shows you here too. Uh, but individual is what you customize. You can see it there and customize it. Oh, went, hit the wrong button. All right, so hit customize. And these are the individual parameters in which you can adjust. Uh, the suspension has a comfort, normal, and sport. Steering has normal, sport, comfort. Engine, same thing. Idle stop, you can choose to disable that when you put in individual mode, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then you can choose the gauge. So you have comfort, normal, and then sport as far as the gauge views. It's just basically slight differences there. All right. So there's your drive modes. There's the individual mode, which is your own personal drive mode. Uh, idle stop, you can turn that off here. Electronic parking brake is here. And um, so basically it engages the rear wheels and you have a little status light. You To release it, you press and hold it and push it down. To engage it, you pull it up. And then you have the brake hold feature, which is when you come to a complete stop, uh, it'll hold the brake for you so you're not holding it. Now, this is a manual transmission, so unless you're on a hill or, or if you're on flat level ground, it's not going to make a huge difference, but it can help out a lot on hills. So here's the shifter, and you can see the throw here. This goes all the way right now to reverse. There's reverse. When you put it in reverse, uh, backup camera pops up with the different views here. Uh, also, the parking sensors are active, rear cross traffic alert, that kind of thing. But uh, it, while you're driving forward at a decent, you know, going forward, I don't know, five or ten miles an hour forward, uh, then it disables it to where you can't move the shifter all the way to the right to put it in reverse. It just kind of stops there. Um, so let's go ahead and go through there. There's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And then reverse. So I like the fact that you don't have to have like something to pull up or something to push down or some kind of mechanical manipulation in order to uh, go over to reverse. You just go ahead and put it in reverse. And then when you're driving, you don't have to worry about it. You can go, you can push this all the way over and pull it down and you know you're in sixth gear because it's not gonna allow you to go into a reverse while you're going forward driving. So that's uh, that's really, at first I was kind of worried, but yeah, it, it works perfect. All right, there's some cup holders and have these little springy arms there, wide open space. There's your armrest and it's like not soft. It's like, su it's soft surface, but it bottoms out quickly. Uh, and it's not all that big as far as sharing with your passenger. But it does lift up and it's kind of spring loaded so it doesn't fall back down on you. You can lift it up all the way here. Then you have a storage compartment there. It goes in there quite a ways. And it has like a rubberized floor. And you can take that out. Let's go ahead and take it out so you can see what it looks like. Because uh, it has this little Easter egg thing. Uh, let me see if I can get a good view of it here. The Civic History. Well, we're not in the Civic. The Civic History goes on, but yet we're not in the Civic. But it's still cool to have that. That's what it looks like under. It's kind of neat. All right, there is the rear view mirror. It has an auto dim rear view mirror, and it's actually auto dimming now. Um, you can see the edges there. It's not the side mirror, it's just this, this mirror here. And you can turn that feature off by pressing that button if you want to. Up here are some reading lights, tap lights, whatever you want to call them. You can turn on all the interior lights by pressing this toggle this way, all off. Or you can have them turn on with the door, have it, putting it in that center position. Uh, this is the button for the sunroof we'll get to in a minute. There's a place for sh shades, safety glasses, whatever you want to put in there pretty good amount of space in there and there uh, it has like a foam inside the visors are a black cloth just like the headliner here and they have a mirror with the light they also extend out 
kind of neat. There's like a speaker and a microphone here as well. Okay, so this this sunroof it has a shade that covers 100% of the light, so that's nice. Open that up. Now we want to let's go ahead and use this button. Now it's just one button to do everything. You can press up on it, and it'll open it up like so. Pull forward to move it down, and then you take the button and pull it back to slide it back. Pull it back again, nothing happens. As far back as it goes. So looking at the visibility here in the back, um, it's actually not really a big deal. It does have pillars with little tiny windows back there, but as far as like just look, looking over my shoulder and seeing back there, it's not really a big deal, especially considering all the technology involved uh, with driving a vehicle safely. With the blind spot detection system, rear cross traffic alert, the camera system, parking sensors, uh, all that kind of stuff. But just overall, in general, it's fine as far as the visibility. I hadn't really had an issue with driving it at all. The way the clutch releases, it feels like the clutch engages about right perfect in the middle. Uh, so it's not like it's um, a little bit higher, a little bit low on the pedal. It just feels like a it's right there in the middle. So feels good it, 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 it took me a little bit longer to get used to it than I thought and I think it's just because I'm so rusty I think it's I mean it's a good clutch it is a good clutch it's just um, you know all vehicles you kind of have to get used to that clutch it takes a little while. some vehicles I can just get in it I forget which one it was but I just get in it started driving and it was like perfect I, I don't know but this one just took a little bit of time to get used to it but like I said, once again, it's probably because it's been a long time since I've had a daily driver that was a manual transmission. So I'm not a fan of the auto start, the idle stop feature here. So I'm going to turn that off. All it does is turn the engine off when you come to a complete stop. And I don't sit idling for a long period of times as far as like sitting at traffic lights or stop lights. I'm not in a big city, that kind of thing. But I used to have an Acura RSX, and um, it was 2006 Acura RSX. So that would be the last Integra type vehicle that was made uh, until this one. And it was a five speed, so this one's a six speed. And uh, so yeah, it's been a little, a little while, a little rusty on on shifting gears, I guess, because I haven't. It's been, I guess, seven years since I've been having a daily driver uh, manual transmission. But um, what's interesting about this one, unlike the RSX, is that when you set the cruise control, it will allow you to shift gears and still maintain your speed on the cruise control. On the uh, RSX. When you, as soon as you push the clutch in, it would disable cruise control. Uh, so that's an upgrade as far as just making it easier to drive. Now this, of course, this is the four-door vehicle. It's more like it's more like an Accord to me. Uh, it's, it's a it feels a much bigger vehicle, and uh, also have a 2020 Accord. So it reminds me of that quite a bit. But it's based on the Civic uh, platform, I guess. But the acceleration is much better uh, than the one I, the RSX I had. It, it, my, I had the 2.0 liter, non-turbocharged. Uh, everything about it is much better. Uh, the acceleration and uh, the, the ride quality, the noise level. You know, of course, the technology's improved quite a bit. So in six gear, uh, driving it, I'm at 62 miles per hour. The RPMs are about 2,400, 20, just under 2,500 RPMs. So, it, you know, with a little engine, you know, 1.5 liter in this case, in this vehicle, turbocharged, you need to have some, some, you know, decent RPMs in order to maintain that power and uh, take advantage of the 
the turbocharger as well. I know the RSX that I had, it, you had to get the RPMs above 3,000 really for it to do anything. It was, it was kind of slow uh, until you get the RPMs up. Another thing about the the shifter here is that when you put it uh, there's no way for you to be to drive while you're going forward to actually go over to the far right enough to put it in reverse so uh, that's something to consider a lot of vehicles that have some kind of you know uh, safety catch in which you have to manually you know, pull up on the shifter or push down on it or something like that in order to get over uh, to reverse, but this one is just it just automatically blocks off uh, reverse when you're going forward As far as a lot of the controls, I mean, it's just like there's there's a lot of overlap with the with the Civic, with the steering wheel, um, and even the, the gauge cluster here with a little a little uh, looks like a little game car playing there, where it shows the lines and it shows your vehicle and it shows vehicles around you. Uh, it's pretty neat. Sometimes it could be, I, I mean, I think it's a little neat, but it's not really like a it doesn't add a, a lot to the practicality to the vehicle, you know, as far as like functionality. But it is kind of neat to see that that the that the actual systems sees where you are in relationship to the lines. Uh, it also sees if there's vehicles around you, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, the lane keep assist system, really good. Uh, it doesn't really fight too much, and it keeps you at a you know fairly decent place in in the lane and uh and the main thing is that it doesn't fight you but it still works it's like my honda ridgeline it kind of it, it, it doesn't fight you but it's not as it doesn't keep you solid in the lane like as, as good as this one does so it seems like sometimes there's a there's a trade-off between fighting you as you're driving like you constantly feel like somebody's tugging on the steering wheel and uh or you can have that which and hold you in the lane good or uh, you can have it to where it doesn't fight you but then it's not as solid in the lane so this one has kind of best of both worlds it seems like and once again regarding the uh, the drive modes over here uh, for a manual transmission to have drive modes like that, I don't know, it just seems like the, uh, as far as the, ex the performance wise, it seems like it's, I like to just to keep it in normal. Sport, you know, it doesn't seem like it does it a whole lot. I mean, you, you have the same power and all that stuff in normal, it feels like anyway. So normal mode, is fine I, I don't i don't really see any advantage to put it in sport mode eco mode it might you know be a little bit better as far as fuel economy um just a just a smidge maybe not even rec noticeable you know uh but it you know it's supposed to give you a little bit better fuel economy
So there you have it. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. And please subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.